What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the shop and welcome back to part three of doing all the paintwork to Sam from Lime Ridge Automotive's 2020 GMC Denali. upload we have a couple things planned we're going to start the video by doing a crucial mod to help clear big wheels and tires on your 2020 gmc denali after that we're going to start doing some prep work to all the parts that you saw got primered in the last upload and then we're actually going to start the painting process today so let me take you over to the stuff that we got primered in the last upload everything is right over here we actually started to sand out some of the pieces as you can see we started sanding all the primer smooth to make sure there's no texture in this stuff now there is a lot of stuff here so I am contemplating on how I'm gonna have to paint this. I think I might have to do it in two different booth loads. So I might have to go through and paint half the stuff first and then the other half second. But you guys will just have to wait and see how it goes. I'm not even sure yet what I'm gonna do, but that will be later in the video. To start off the day here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually get these front mud flaps trimmed up. I guess GM actually calls these paint protectors. So these go below the flares and they basically keep rock chips from flinging back at your paint. Now what I've seen that is most most common with people who own these trucks is they usually take these things and just leave them off, which honestly doesn't look good. Your flare comes down and then all of a sudden just an empty space of where this should go and there's nothing there. So we don't want to do that to this truck. We want to make it look complete. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut these. So let me take you over to the truck and I'll show you exactly where I'm going to cut them and how I'm going to do it. And guys, if you don't remember from the last upload, check out these taillights that are all wrapped up on this thing looking sweet. And also check out when the light shines through here too. Too. Yeah, they look sweet. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Those look fantastic. So as you can see, this is what the truck looks like without these mud flaps on the bottom. And like I said, it just kind of looks incomplete. It's just kind of abrupt stop there. Normally with these on, they would fill in that gap. So as you can see, guys, this would go up there something like that. There's no way that these 14 and a half wide tires are gonna clear with this big amount in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up in here. We're gonna follow this lip. We're gonna come down a little bit. We're gonna get rid of pretty much the entire part right in here. So let me mark this out and show you exactly where I'm gonna cut it. Okay, so there you have it. So everything on this side is all gonna go away. We're gonna get rid of all of that. And then what you'll see is all the stuff on the right here is what's gonna be left. The reason we do it like this, so that way it still looks nice even after it's cut. I've definitely seen these get hacked up a good bit by some people who just cut them however, but we found that leaving this little bit of lip in here in this orange part marries up perfectly with this. So it's like a continuation of the flare. So this is gonna look really nice. And once it's painted, it's honestly gonna blend right in, which is what we want to do. Before I cut that, I wanted to show you guys option number two. If you're looking to clear these big wheels and tires on your 2020 GMC, this option requires you actually purchasing something. That something is from a company called Kelderman. I'm sure you have heard of that in the past. Kelderman makes all kinds of lift kits, suspension mods, and I'm pretty sure they're big into air ride as well. So Kelderman actually makes replacement mud flaps in a much smaller size. Look actually just like this. I have a set here because Jack actually sent the these down. These are going to go on his Denali to help him clear some big wheels and tires. We did the exact mod to his truck where we cut these out. If some of you remember, Jack had a set of polished wheels on his Denali before he switched to the black wheels. And like I said, they cleared perfectly. But since he switched to his new black wheels, I think he also increased his tire size. I don't know it off the top of my head, but in going with such a huge size, he told me he did hit the mud flap that we cut. That's when he reached out to Kelderman. Kelderman sent him these and his it's our job is going to be to paint these for his truck, but I can kind of show you what they're going to look like on Sam's truck. The only downfall to installing this Kelderman kit is you have to cut into your fender. As you can see, this right here is hitting the bottom of the fender. Sam already kind of beat this back a little bit, almost like a NorCal mod in order to clear these wheels and tires. But if you go with the Kelderman kit, you actually have to, like I said, cut into the, the fender of the truck in order to get this to fit up in there. But this is definitely another nice way to do it. Obviously, if you want to do some cut into your fender. If you don't want to cut up your fender, this is the way to go. So let's get into cutting these things right now. So 
So that's what we cut off and this is it. Finished product here, both mud flaps completely trimmed up. They both look identical, which is really, really good news. The black one still needs to get primer. The other one is ready to roll, just needs to be sanded and just kind of some of these edges cleaned up. I did take a grinder to it, but I still got to go over it with the sander just to make it perfect. So if you guys were doing this at home and you had a set of black mud flaps, you would actually be all done. You could literally just reinstall these on the truck and that's it. That's all you really need to do to maintain that factory look and clear you know, 12 wide, 14 wide, whatever you want to run. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get started on prepping up the rest of this stuff. So let's get to it. So it's actually been a couple of days since the beginning of the video because as I said, we had to get all this stuff prepped up and that took a ton of time. As you can see by the stuff behind me here, I didn't take a count yet, but I wanna say there's over 30 pieces in here that I need to paint. It's kind of all over the place. There's definitely a ton of stuff. So that's gonna make my job really, really interesting. Honestly, very difficult, but it's nothing we're not used to down here. So I think we can do it. But as you can see, we did get the grill completely prepped. This was luckily already smooth. There wasn't any texture. So we just had to go in every single cracking crevice and scuff so that way everything is dulled out which we went ahead and did and it all looks really good as you can see so hunter is just working on bringing in the last pieces here hunter did pretty much 90 percent of the prep work and he was able to get all this stuff nice and smooth which is great oh here he is now sweet man those look nice awesome so as you guys know this is hunter like i said hunter did about 90 percent of the work here wouldn't you say you did about 90 percent of the work yep. and what do you think timeline this took uh, probably 45 to 50 hours and that was sanding and getting everything prepped not including dis assembly primer or anything like that correct no so yes so obviously a ton of work now how do your fingers feel Not a little rough <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure but dude honestly thank you so much you did a great job and it's people like hunter who make this stuff possible as you guys know i'm pretty busy if i was had to spend 45 to 50 hours that's more than a week for me so i couldn't do all this stuff and do everything i do without people like hunter and the rest of our crew here so good job man thanks no problem. So with that, guys, we're going to head back. We're going to start mixing up some sealer. But before I do, I did want to get a full count for how many pieces there are. So let's do that right now. So let's start on this table. So we have 1, 2, 3, 13, 14, 15, 16, 36, 44, and 45. Wow. 45 pieces. That is insane. As you heard, Hunter say took 45 to 50 hours. So that's about an hour per piece, which honestly is really good. But when you look at this amount of stuff, look at how much work this is. It's just insane how many pieces we have 45 pieces wow and not only that guys it's got to go white pearl so wish me luck because definitely i definitely need it so anyways let's get to mixing the ceiling <laughs> that real quick this is definitely helping me get through tonight if i have any other kenny chesney fans watching right now please make sure you smash that thumbs up button this music is helping me get all this stuff sprayed because it is getting late everyone did go home by now i'm all alone but i want to get this done tonight so we can keep going on the truck because i know sam is super anxious to get this thing back anyways all the sealer was sprayed on everything looks really good there was one little problem and i want to show you so it was on this lower valance. I accidentally ran the sealer right in there and it's not a small run, it's quite a big run. Out of 45 pieces, that's the only piece that I messed up so far, so that is good. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it outside. I'm gonna let the primer dry up really good because I can't sand it until it's dry. So I'm just gonna pull this out of the booth and I'll paint it at a different time. It's not a big deal at all. But everything else turned out really good. I'm really happy with how everything turned out which is good news. So anyways, let's head back to the mix room because we're gonna start spraying some white. Let's get to it. All right. 
Alrighty guys, so we got one coat of our white base coat sprayed on this stuff. I still need to put one more, but I'm gonna do that in the morning. It's getting pretty late, I'm feeling pretty tired. So I'm just gonna start off fresh, new day tomorrow. I'm gonna get all this stuff done. And then we have to start putting our pearl on. So for those of you who don't know what a tri-coat is, basically means try three, it means three different layers. So we have to apply our base, which is our white, then our mid coat, which gives it the pearl, the metallic. And then after that, we have to finish it with a clear coat. So it makes it a lot more difficult to do because it's an extra step that we have to put in there, which definitely takes a little bit more time, especially when you're spraying 45 pieces. Anyways, I'll catch you in the morning. guys so we got all the white base coat sprayed on all the parts so now it's time to start getting some pearl on the stuff as you watch take notice of how much the color changes when we start throwing the pearl on it takes the color from looking just like a normal white what you're seeing right here and completely changes it gives it metallic but also kind of yellows it up a little bit so it's definitely going to be interesting to see how much this color changes so let's head back and start mixing it up finally done with all the base coat on this entire job. In total, we used almost a gallon of base. So that was about a half gallon of white and about a half gallon of the pearl coat. But check it out, everything turned out really good. Everything's nice and smooth. The color is really, really interesting how it kind of looks right now. As I'm watching it through the back of my camera and it's definitely looking a little bit whiter than what it is in person here. It looks just like what it's called, frost white tri-coat. It's looking really nice. All the pieces turn out really good, which is good to hear. There's honestly like no dirt in this stuff. Everything's nice and smooth, no texture. I'm really happy with everything and I'm also really happy to get all this stuff clear coated. This paint suit was brand new when I started, pretty white now. The filters were brand new, they're starting to get pretty white. Definitely a ton of work, cannot wait to see the end results. So let's head back and mix up some clear coat. Ladies and gentlemen, 44 pieces all done. Are you ready to see this stuff? Let's check it out. Cue the cinematics. Pretty impressive, right? 44 pieces, all done, looking absolutely perfect. This is definitely the most amount I've ever painted at once. A couple videos ago, I mentioned a customer from Ohio that we did a white pearl job on, and we did just about the same amount of pieces on that job. But with that one, I had to do it in two different booth loads. But this one, I was able to fit everything in here, and luckily, we were able to knock it out of the park. It took a ton of time. I honestly don't even know how many hours I have just in painting this stuff. It was well over eight hours. As you saw, I had to be here 
two separate days in order to finish it up. The results definitely speak for themselves. Everything is looking fantastic. I have absolutely zero complaints. It couldn't have turned out any better. And I am also beyond excited to see this stuff go on the truck. I mean, I can really start to kind of picture what this thing is gonna look like coming together. And another good thing is we're not gonna have to do any polishing. That's how good it turned out, just perfect. So if you guys are excited to see this stuff on the truck, please make sure you subscribe and make sure you tap that bell icon so you don't miss out on it because trust me, this thing is gonna be one of a kind. So with that being said, please make sure you like the video, drop a comment down below, let me know what you think, and I'll catch you guys in the next upload.